brother! Guys, if you can't tell, we have been thinking a lot about phoenixes lately. I even bought this guy. His name's Robert. I call him Bob. He says he prefers Mr. Bob, and I'm like, whatever, Bob, you're not even real. More on track though, today I have been diving into one of my oldest Harry Potter questions, and that is, why was it relevant at all that the tail feathers in Harry and Voldemort's wands specifically came from Fox? Or why Fox's feather would have ever chosen Voldemort to begin with? I know Bob would never do that. Well today, we find out. It's one of those small details we learn very early on about Harry's wand. It so happens that the phoenix, whose tail feather resides in your wand, gave another feather. Just one other. But it's not until book four when we finally learn which phoenix specifically gave the tail feathers for the wands. Harry's wand and Voldemort's wand share cores. Each of them contains a feather from the tail of the same phoenix. This phoenix, in fact. The phoenix in question there is, of course, Fox, and Dumbledore is revealing this information to Harry just hours after his duel with Voldemort in the graveyard. And he immediately goes on to explain why the fact that they have twin cores is important. They will not work properly against each other, said Dumbledore. If, however, the owners of the wands force the wands to do battle, a very rare effect will take place. One of the wands will force the other to regurgitate spells it has performed in reverse. The most recent first, and then those which preceded it. And indeed, this is insanely important. The fear of the twin cores and how to overcome them pretty much keeps Voldemort at bay from trying to kill Harry for the next three books until he finally gets the Elder One in Deathly Hallows. <laughs> that was him getting lightning. Zap. Yeah, no, I got it, yeah, yeah. yeah. What J.K. Rowling and or Dumbledore fail to ever explain to us, though, is why it's important that the feathers came from Fox. Maybe it's just simply so that Dumbledore will know that Harry and Voldemort have twin cores and can explain it to him? Maybe it's so we are certain that these are the only two and that there's not like a third wand out there that has another core. And I don't know, I guess those things are true when they do let us draw some conclusions, but the fact that Dumbledore owns the bird who gave the feathers to the main good and bad guy's wands seems like way too significant of a thing for such a simple explanation. Why Fox? Why Bob? Why? I don't know, check with HR or something. In search of answers, we decided to look into the history of the two wands and of course, Fox himself. Harry, of course, buys his wand in 1991 and that's when we learned that the wand chooses the wizard. And of course, right after he purchases it, Ollivander writes to Dumbledore to tell him that the second wand has finally been purchased, just a mere 54 years later. When we learn that the wand chooses the wizard, we don't really know the full ramifications of this. But when we learn that Fox was the bird that gave the feather for the wand, it's initially like really cool. Whoa, no way, Harry and Fox have like a connection. Maybe that's how he was able to summon him in the Chamber of Secrets or something. But then you remember that the other wand also chose Voldemort, who subsequently was also in the Chamber of Secrets at the time. So then does Voldemort also have a connection with Fox? Because I don't know, that just sort of feels like icky. Or is there actually any connection at all between any of them? Well, let's keep traveling back in time. The fact that Dumbledore knows Fox gave both feathers suggests that he owned Fox at the moment of the donation, which means he would have had to have owned Fox by at least 1937, which is when Voldemort got his wand. And yet, as of 1927, which is when Fantastic Beasts the Crimes of Grindelwald takes place, he doesn't appear to own Fox yet. At least not that we see. And like, not for nothing, but we do see that he does have some of his possessions from later on, so it's not like we don't have anything to go on there. Plus, he also does say that There's a story in my family that a phoenix will come to any Dumbledore in desperate need. But that seems to be more a foreshadowing for this moment later in the movie rather than an allusion to the fact that he already has a phoenix. That said, let's recap what's going on back in the time of Fantastic Beasts. Grindelwald is gaining power but is still clearly afraid of Dumbledore as a threat to his cause. Who represents the greatest threat to our cause? 
That was Dumbledore. He is afraid of facing Dumbledore in battle, as evidenced by the fact that he is carrying the blood pact with him at all times, but he does still want to kill him, and he thinks the only way to do that is by using Credence and his Obscurus. Credence himself is in quite a predicament in terms of his quest for self-identity. He simply has no idea who he is, and despite seeming like a good-natured guy, he is easily manipulated by Grindelwald when he offers him any semblance of who he is. In any case, it would seem like the path of the Fantastic movies is this. The final battle will be the legendary duel between Dumbledore and Grindelwald, and until that point, they won't actually meet. At least that's what it says in the Deathly Hallows. But since this is a five-part prequel, I'm thinking we're gonna need some other climactic battles between now and the end of the fifth movie, so I think we're also eventually going to get to see Credence versus Dumbledore. And although we know that Dumbledore will obviously win this fight because, you know, he's still alive in the future, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who's going to go about killing Credence, especially because otherwise he's just a pretty innocent bystander. Especially if he learns that he is somehow related to him. So he needs a way to defeat Credence without killing him, and he'll also have to eventually find a way to destroy the blood pack so that him and Grindelwald can actually face off in the fifth movie. Whew, it's a lot to do. Now, I know we have given explanations in the past as to how Dumbledore might overcome the blood pact, and those could still very much come to pass, but another option could be that he has Credence destroy it. Because it seems like so far we have the blood pact, which appears unbreakable, and Credence, who seems kind of unstoppable. But what would happen if they met? It's hard to say because Credence is sort of like magically unique in terms of what he is and how powerful he is, but we know that eventually Dumbledore and Grindelwald do fight. And since we've never heard of Credence before, it seems plausible enough to me like they could like meet and just both end up destroyed. Which might then also turn the otherwise seemingly sympathetic Nagini against Dumbledore for like, I don't know, the next 50 years or so. But so what? I feel like we're getting a little off track. What does any of that have to do with Fox and Voldemort's wand? Well, again, it just feels unusual that a bird and a character that is so constantly aligned with the good side would give a feather that would then go on to choose a wizard who goes on to be like so evil and terrible. But I think this is where we are forgetting the key characteristics of the phoenix, that they can be reborn from their ashes and what that could mean for this explanation. Consider this. One way or another, whether or not Credence ends up truly being a member of the Dumbledore family or not, a phoenix does appear to his aid. At the moment, the phoenix's identity is not known to us, but it is definitely within the realm of possibility that it's Fox. And I mean, the list of suspects is pretty short. I mean, it's pretty much just Fox or, you know, Bob here, and again, Bob's not real. But that brings us to a new interesting question and a sort of Ship of Theseus paradox situation. If you're unfamiliar with the Ship of Theseus paradox, it goes something like this. If you have a ship and replace every single part of it, is it still the same ship? Or to just give you maybe a more simple example, let's just say you have an ax and you replace the head of the ax three times and the handle of the ax two times. At no point did you stop owning an ax, but is this now even the same ax? Do you see where I'm going with this? Like if a phoenix bursts into flame and then is reborn from its ashes, is that the same phoenix? Or is it a new phoenix that goes by the same name? Or is there any difference? Like, is it neither? Is it both? And to that end, does a feather taken from a phoenix have a tendency to align more with the witch or wizard the phoenix initially appeared to? Like, what if, yes, Harry and Voldemort both have tail feathers from Fox, but two different foxes. Like if Voldemort's tail feather was taken from a fox when he appeared to Credence and was aligned against Dumbledore, and Harry's was taken from fox after he aligned himself with the good guys. It's the same bird, but with distinctly different existences and companions and values. Going a step further, we also have a theory explaining why the Phoenix is able to appear to Credence at all is because he's actually Dumbledore's dark twin. Full video by clicking the card, but short version, he's the embodiment of an Obscurus Dumbledore formed after Ariana's death. In that case, you'd have two tail feathers from the same bird, both of which kind of belong to Dumbledore, but just one from the dark version and one from the light. And the wands created from the subsequent tail feathers would then go on to choose the darkest and lightest wizards of the next generation. Ooh, I have to tell you, I really like the sound of that, like an edgier phoenix. Like, doesn't that make for a good title? Like, Fantastic Beasts, the Dark Phoenix. Wait. 
Who knows, maybe third time's a charm. But seriously, I do love this idea because it means the twin cores aren't just from Dumbledore's bird, they're also sort of born out of the other greatest wizarding feud of all time. It perfectly ties together the two stories and allows for Fox's feather to choose Voldemort with pretty good backing. Plus, even though we've always just sort of assumed both feathers were donated to Ollivander at the same time, that's not a given. They very much could have been donated at very separate times. But there you go, guys. That's why I think it is relevant that the Phoenix tail feathers came specifically from Fox. But Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Is there a better explanation for why Fox is relevant specifically to the wand cores? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. Hey guys, if you've been enjoying that brand new intro here on the channel, we now have shirts, pins, and stickers all available over at Super carlinbrothers.store get yours today guys thanks as always for watching today's video please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future harry potter action from us if you want to see the full dumbledore's dark twin theory you can check out this video right here or if you want to see why dumbledore is an actual phoenix you can check out this video right here but ben that's all i got for you today man i will see you in another life brother